on leaving the beautiful highlands after a month there, where I spent my time exploring new hidden gems, bagging on rows and spending time with great people, even witnessing roughly 500 red deer whilst coming over a BLAC on a hike with my good friend Charles. They've caught a whiff of us because they've been hanging out out of the wind. Yeah. Down in here. Driving southbound was a kick in the teeth to be leaving such a stunning landscape to return to a concrete jungle. I made the most of my last night by paddling out to Alder Clay, if that's how you pronounce it, one of Loch Lomond's ancient islands. I've been so intrigued in these forested islands that once homed Iron Age settlers 2,500 years ago. So I loaded up my pack raft and headed out to this beautiful island where I camped for the night. I went a little bit later than expected, but so glad I made it over despite the windy conditions. So I have just arrived at the island and I've got about half an hour till it gets dark. So I'm gonna scout around somewhere to camp. I didn't know whether to go on the next island, but the winds really started picking up. So I don't think it's worth paddling and then setting up when it's really dark and not knowing where to pitch. So because the wind's picked up, I need to, I don't really want to stay on this bank because it's really windy. But if not, I've got to walk everything and portage over to the other side, which means I'll be more protected, but it's a little bit of a trek and it's about to get dark. So that side you could potentially not have good places to pitch. In the end, my best option was to escape the wind and portage my kit to the opposite side of the island, which wasn't as far as expected. To my relief, this end was completely sheltered. Just as the light was fading, I found a perfect spot to pitch my tent, facing out to the neighbouring lock that's supposed to have wallabies that inhabit it. The sun dipped behind the hills, marking the end of the day, but also my last night in Scotland. Although I was gutted I didn't arrive earlier, it felt so amazing just to be outside, sitting bankside making dinner and sleeping in my minimal one-man tent to the sound of distant coots. A good reset before motorway driving and masses of people the following day. These sure are the moments that you'll never forget. Has literally just started raining so I've come to cook and eat my dinner inside but this place is absolutely gorgeous I walked over the other side of the island and found this little paradise I think the rain and the wind is definitely coming in tonight and tomorrow it's a shame I couldn't get over to the wallaby island it's just the wind picked up and it was pretty mental I'm just going to uh, write in my journal, maybe start reading some of my book because it is longer evenings in the winter but you definitely tell that summer is on the way it gets dark at 6 o'clock now which is mad I'm so glad that I made the move and came out to the island because I was, I was humming and hawing whether to do it 
literally last night I drove to Glencoe and I met a friend at a pub. I'd done a couple of Monroes and then drove to the Clag Inn. If you know, you know. And then, yeah, I met Anna, the lovely Anna, if you've seen her in a video. And then uh, I literally slept in the back seats of my car because it was late. I didn't fancy setting up a tent and there wasn't really anywhere to set a tent up. I got my head down but I was definitely a bit tired today. But coming out here and making the most of my last day is just really precious and you value so much time when you haven't got a lot of it. Especially when I know it's my last time here for a long while. I'm going to head off to sleep now and I will see you in the morning. I've literally just ran into my tent because it's just started chucking it down. But what a night, I slept so well. It was really quiet, really peaceful. And to wake up to this this morning is just breathtaking. This right here is just what I live for. Just peace and quiet and just living for the moment. But how magical is this? It's a real emotional last day today, I think. I spent the rest of my morning relishing the silence and the gorgeous setting that I'd camped in before packing away my gear just before the next wave of bad weather came in. I think personally it's such a necessity to get outside and spend time alone in pretty places. That's when magical things happen and you start to discover Packing up the last bits of my stuff and then I'm going to leave because uh, the weather's changing again. It comes in like cycles, it gets really windy and rainy and then it goes really nice. I just got one of my paddles out because this swan got really cocky and it come over to me <laughs> and was getting really close, nearly trying to peck at my pack raft. I don't know, I was just leaving him to it. And then I just got my paddle out and was like gonna nudge him if he got near my pack raft because I don't want a big hole in that, that's the only way you're getting it off. If I don't film it's because it's chucking it down. I've literally just bought my cannon so I didn't get many shots of coming in and everything. <laughs> The remainder of that day, I drove to the Lake District to meet some good friends, Fritz and Yvonne, before heading even further southbound. 
Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Take care and I will see you on the next one.